Welcome to my lecture online. We're now ready to start talking about the contents of subframe 4 and subframe 5. Now we'll start with subframe 4 in this video, but let's review what all the subframes are. Remember that there's five subframes, subframe 1 through 5, and they are sent in what we call frames of 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds a frame of data is, set, is sent and that takes 30 seconds to transmit from the space vehicles down to the receivers. And notice if there's five subframes, I mean each subframe takes six seconds to send. Now subframes one through three are repeated every 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds it contains essentially the same contents and once in a while those contents are then updated as required. Subframes four and five, however, they consist of a whole array of pages, 25 pages, containing different data. So subframe 4 contains 25 pages and subframe 5 contains 25 pages. So they need to be sent one page at a time every 30 seconds. Of course it takes 6 seconds for each of those pages, but it is part of the overall frame that's sent every 30 seconds, which means it takes 12 and a half minutes to send all 25 pages of subframe 4 and all 25 pages of subframe 5. And then, of course, that then gets repeated every 12 and a half minutes. Now, the data in each page of subframe 4 and subframe 5 is going to be different. That's why it takes that long for it to send, because they need to send 25 pages like that. So here are the 25 pages of subframe 4. Now, it turns out a number of these pages are reserved. So you can see that page 1, 6, 11, 16, and 21 is a block of pages that reserve for a specific purpose. Then we have another block of 6, 12, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24. Those 6 pages are also reserved for a different purpose. And then we have a third block of 2, for page 14 and 15, which are also reserved in that specific system use. So those are reserved to put in whatever data the, the users of this need, and so they then include that data with that. And so we have no privilege to know what's inside that reserved data. That leaves us with a block of 8 plus another 4 for a total of 12 pages out of the 25 that have useful data that we require, that we need. Now the, the first eight up here, page 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, and 10, contain the almanac data of eight SVs, of eight space vehicles, namely space vehicle 25 through 32. The other 24 space vehicle almanac data is contained in subframe 5, and so we'll take a look at that uh, in the near future. But notice that the content in here is identical in structure to the content of 24 of the 25 pages in subframe 5 that contain the almanac data of the other 24 space vehicles. So currently we have the capability of having almanac data available for 32 total space vehicles. Of course it takes 12 and a half minutes to get all that data across uh, from the satellite to the receivers. Now, almanac data is similar to ephemeris data, but not as accurate. And almanac data is present in each satellite for the entire constellation satellite, so all the uh, orbital parameter data of each of the up to 32 satellites uh, is contained within the navigation message inside each of the SVs. So each SV has the orbital data of all the SVs in the constellation. So when you lock onto one satellite and you be begin to download the information from that one satellite, it then will tell you where all the other satellites are located. So then it's easy to find those satellites and then to begin tracking those satellites because you will have the orbital information of all the satellites. Now it's not as accurate as the ephemeris data. So then once you lock onto a satellite and you begin to download the ephemeris data, then you can correct the orbital parameters to make them very accurate, so then you correct your exact position. So sometimes it takes a bit of time before your position is known extremely accurately because you require that ephemeris data, but at least the almanac data will get you into the ballpark of where the SVs are at. What else do we have in there? Well, 
We have page 13, which has the NMCT. NMCT stands for the Navigation Message Correction Table. So that contains parameters to make corrections to the orbital parameters. And so we have a table of those corrections in there. And we'll take a look at that in more detail. There's also a page that contains some special messages. Again, we'll take a look at what those are. And then on page 18, we have Ionosphere and UTC data. So the ionosphere is, of course, the upper layer of the atmosphere. And when the transmission messages go through the ionosphere, they refract because the index of refraction of the ionosphere is different than the index of refraction of space. So they bend. And the amount of bending or refraction, and also the message slows down in the ionosphere by a certain amount. And so that page contains information parameters about the ionospheric conditions because they always change and so you want to have there some information about the ionosphere so you can adjust the timing of the signal due to the delays in the ionosphere. It also contains UTC data and UTC stands for Coordinated Universal Time so you want to be able to know what the, what the uh, GPS time is as opposed to the UTC time have been able to calculate that difference and include that in your data calculations. And then finally, the final of the 25 pages, page number 25, contains the AS flags. Now AS stands for anti-spoof, so there's flags in there that, that tell you about the conditions of the anti-spoof capability of the satellites, of the data within the satellites, and then it also has what we call SV configuration information, so how these satellites are configured, again for all 32 satellites, so this one this one page, the last page, in subframe 4 contains all the configuration data of all the satellites in the, in, the, in the constellation. And then finally, it has some health bits that tell you what the health condition are. How well is that satellite operating? Are there some limitations? And how do we know? Well, it contains these health bits that tell us for each satellite what condition the satellite is in so we can then realize that some of the data may not be valid based because it's been detected that it's not operating quite at optimum and so we need to ignore that or be very careful about it. In other cases it says everything is working perfectly fine so whatever, whatever data you're receiving from the satellite is perfectly fine to be used. So this tells us what the condition is for each of the 32 satellites in the constellation. So, those are the contents of subframe 4. Obviously, we're going to need to spend some more time on detailing what each of the uh, pages contain, the, the ones that are circled in red here, so that you then have a better idea of what's contained within subframe 4. Now, keep in mind that these eight right here are exactly the same in structure as 24 to 25 pages in subframe 5. They contain the exact same data in the exact same format because that is what we call the almanac data for all of the satellites starting from 25 to 32, which has to be exactly the same format as the satellites from 1 to 24. Just keep that in mind. And that's what we know about subframe 4.